Hello, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about getting better colors for your landscape images. Now, of course, when it comes down to colors, it's always about personal taste. But I still hope you will learn a few things with this video. Also, if you want to follow along, you can find this panoramic RAW file in the description of the video. So without much more talking, let's go. Here we are in the camera raw editor to do the basic raw adjustments first and actually for this shot like 99% of the adjustments will be done here in the camera raw editor. First off I want to change the profile to Adobe standard to lessen the contrast and thus have more control over everything myself. Then I'm going through the basic tab real quick and since the base image is already pretty good when it comes down to the brightness we don't really need to change much here. However, taking a look at the histogram, we can see the image is on the darker side. I do want to change that by bringing up the whites and this will also help to introduce some contrast. Just like that. I'm trying to get as close to overexposure as possible. This might result in a very bright sky, but don't worry about that. We will change that using local adjustments. Then I do want to also bring up the blacks. Looking at the histogram, the darker parts do look a little bit weird. That's because of the very near foreground. You can see there is some kind of an exposure going on, but that's really not too bad. So let's go with something like this. Then I do want to introduce some dehaze, which just helps to improve the contrast for this image. But I'm using a very, very low value here because the dehaze slider is insanely powerful. And that's already it for those basic adjustments. We don't really need to add any vibrance or saturation since you can see the colors are already pretty strong in this case. That means we can head into the local adjustments. And as I said, I want to change the sky, giving this somewhat dramatic look. And most importantly, change the colors a little bit because right now they do look a bit weird. So let's first create a sky mask by using this little button right here. Uh, luckily for us, Lightroom is doing a pretty good job at selecting the sky for this image. So how would we change the colors? Let me deactivate the overlay. Taking a closer look, you can see a slight purple color cast and this makes the blue color tones look a bit strange. Also, there are some yellow tones in the clouds, which I might want to restore. I'm not sure about that yet. So first, let's work on that blue tones. For that I'm going to drop the white balance temperature and I'm also going to drop the tint and this should remove the purple tones in the sky. And just like that we have a much much more natural looking sky. So that was pretty easy. However I do want to make the sky a little more dramatic by bringing down the exposure. And bringing down the exposure will result in darker clouds as well. And that's not what I want, especially those brighter fluffy clouds on the left side. So for that reason, I'm going to bring up the whites. Let's bring them up quite a bit. And at the same time, I could add some contrast as well, which helps for that purpose. Perfect. Um, to make the shadows a little darker, I'm going to bring down the blacks. But here I need to be very careful. I don't want to introduce too much underexposure in this shot, but that's looking really, really good. To make the clouds look a little more interesting, I'm usually using clarity. This works pretty good in this case as well. Uh, let's bring it up a bit like that. And in this case, I'm also going to introduce some texture, giving those clouds some more sharpness. Okay, that's looking good. Finally, I think the sky is lacking some saturation, so let's change that. Bring it up quite a bit. All right, perfect. Let's compare to before. You can see the colors do look quite a bit different, way more saturated. But of course, we also have added some more contrast, which will make the colors look stronger. So just after the basic and local adjustments, we have a much, much better looking image. But let's continue with a few local adjustments. I actually do want to change the foreground a little bit and here I'm using a linear gradient. 
and I'm just covering this field here. Just like that. Now, I do want to change the top part of that selection, but not the foreground. So I'm going to subtract another linear gradient just from the very near foreground up until this point, I guess. On the upper part, I do want to raise the whites, giving some more light on this field, just like that. And we could increase the clarity and the texture as well. All right, that's looking really, really awesome already. Of course, we can apply some more color grading to adjust things a bit further. Let's head into the color mixer. If we want to have a darker blue sky, I can go into the luminance tab and just bring down the blue luminance. This might be a bit too much. I'm not sure about that. Let's leave it at that point for now. And I can also introduce some more brightness into the field in the foreground by simply bringing up the yellow luminance. So let's do just that. Perfect. I do want to further improve the colors in the saturation tab. Actually, that just means to bring up the blue saturation a bit, just to make the sky a little more impactful. Perfect. Now let's do some split toning in the color grading tab. Here for the highlights, I do want to apply a very warm color tone somewhere here, but with a bit less saturation, I guess. That's looking good. And for the midtones, I'm going with the same color tone. Maybe more in the orange range though. And again, let's bring down the saturation because I don't want to overdo it here. The split toning is a rather subtle change for this image, but it helps giving this shot some more sunset color tones. And as you can see, this fits pretty good on this shot. Then finally, let's head into the calibration tab. And most of the times, especially for sunset images, I'd like to drop the blue primary hue just a tiny amount. And I'm also going to raise the saturation here. Again, a rather subtle change. I guess you can mostly see it right there in the tree in the center. So it kind of gets some more contrast between the tree and the sky in the back. So that's really, really good. Finally, let's sharpen this image in the details tab. Bring down the radius, increase the detail, add some masking, and introduce some more sharpening. Perfect, and here we are done with the raw adjustments. The image is looking really, really good already, but we can do some final adjustments using Photoshop, so let's open it up there. So the most obvious thing would be to get rid of my shadow on the left side. For that reason, I am going to use the patch tool. So I'm just drawing a very rough selection around the shadow. Just like that. And with this selection active, I'm going to drag it either on the left or right side. It doesn't really matter in this case. That's looking good. And hit Ctrl D to deselect it. And you can see the shadow is gone. Perfect. Now let's look out for some sensor spots. There are a few, I think. There's also a strange light in the back of the landscape. It's quite noisy in the sky. I think I need to change that later. So at this point, there's actually not much left to do. However, I do want to use the Nick Collection plugin to enchant this image somewhere. So let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. And first off, I do want to apply the polarization effect, which should work pretty good on this shot. So let's turn up the strength. It does look a bit too strong in the foreground, but I like what it's doing to the sky. So let's see if we can find a middle ground. Uh, let's go with something like this. And I do want to add another filter and just try the pro contrast one. In here, let's bring up the dynamic contrast and the correct contrast a bit. Again, a subtle change, but it helps improving the image. So that's looking good. And with those two filters added, let's hit OK. 
So that's pretty much it. I just want to apply some noise reduction to the sky. Again, therefore I'm using the Nick Collection plugin. So let's go to Filter, Nick Collection, and here I'm choosing Define. So I actually don't really need to change anything. Down there in the bottom right corner, you can see a preview before and after. And you can see Define is doing a very good job at reducing the noise. So with this filter added, let's hit OK. And that's it for editing this image. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. As you can see, we have improved the colors quite a bit. So if you have any questions about editing, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.